Okay, boom. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this afternoon. We have a wonderful guest with us today, one who is going to give us some amazing information as well as inspiration, and that is none other than the legendary brother James Bomb of Public Enemy. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Alaikum salam, my brother. How you doing? I'm doing phenomenal, sir. Now that I'm speaking with you, and on behalf of yes, myself, my family, that. and the viewing audience of the People's Podcast, we want to just thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. And uh, everybody, you know, buckle your seatbelts. We look forward to this great history. And uh, let's, first of all, man, I'm humbled. We're humbled and we're honored. Let's get straight started, sir. So when yes, did sir. you know, when did you know um, that you uh, had a love for hip hop? Well, Music started when I was very young. Uh, my mother used to have a, a, a routine every Saturday morning of cleaning up, and she would play all of the music uh, that she liked. And um, I think Lakeside at the time, they 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 was rapping. Uh, this was in the 70s, I think, um, and rapping. But when I used to hear WRBD in Florida, uh, in the area where I grew up at, uh, the soul child used to come on and he would play different, different, uh, and mix it up. Uh, this is in the, the Southern Florida area where, where you would hear the Miami bass and, 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 you know, uncle Luke, you know, he's one of the men who actually, um, uh, kind of create that sound that, that Miami bass sound. Yes, sir. But when yes, sir. I went to New York at 20 years old, I, I mean, I just, I, I fell in love with hip hop. Um, this was, I went to New York in 83. I was like four months shy of my 21st birthday and New York was just popping with hip hop, man, just mm, all mm, over mm. the city and on Long Island. And, you know, th this is the argument right now in hip hop of the origin of where it came from, the Bronx and cool hurt. But to be, to be honest, the whole city was popping with hip hop. You, you know, you had DJ Hollywood, you had all these different DJs. Uh, you had a uh, Grandmaster Flash. He was doing his thing. So uh, even ba Africa Bambada was DJing and all that. They was all happening at the same time. Uh, mm. So my recollection of it, it was in Queens. Long Island, Spectrum City was popping. You know, that, that was the DJ crew that started you know, Public Enemy came out of that DJ crew. And mm. that's how hip hop was for me. And it just was all over the city, man. It, it, it was just a, a, an amazing time. But the birth of it, hip hop, and then if you look at the griots from Africa, how they did our oral history, they talked about, uh, they rap or they did the history in a rhythmic way talking it and so mm. i think it comes out of it out of our our ancient history as well that you're able to do spoken word or you rap uh, uh rhythmically with with the words uh and you brought it to the people and you brought the history of the people and now today it's an explosion around the planet earth whether it's rock r b whatever it's it's an explosion Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Excellent. And uh, yes, sir. Shout out to everybody uh, who's watching. Susan Miriam says, Assalamu alaikum family. Welcome salam. And thank you to our YouTube family, uh, Brother Kente, Brother Musa, Sister Auntie, Sister Hope, and everyone who already shows love on all the platforms. All right. So after you fall in love with hip hop, then when did you uh, hear, first hear the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Well, I heard that. I heard that. Um, I kind of heard that. Uh, Right after I met this, you know, this this strange brother, shot, you know, shiny face, you know, bow suit and bow tie, named Richard Three X. The world knows him as <laughs> Professor Griff. Uh, okay, okay, out, okay. I, I saw him um, on Park Avenue out in Roosevelt, Long Island, and he said, hey, "Brother, uh, I, I heard him say God," and I was like, "Man, 
I'm, I'm hearing a black man call himself God. And I was, you know, kind of mesmerized. I was looking at him like, man, this brother calling himself God. And I saw the other brother calling me, I spoke with God. And I was like, oh, okay, God, huh? So I was intrigued by that. And uh, uh, Professor Griff took me out to the mosque that Sunday. And from that day to now, I was rolling with the rolling with the Nation of Islam, the FOI. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And how did your family and friends feel about you accepting the teachings? Well, my family didn't take to it right away, but after a while, they saw how it actually changed me. But I have a family member on Long Island. Um, kind of got my mother to understand. He, he says, he asked her, Uncle Blinky asked her, um, do you know Muhammad Ali? She said, of course. Uh, you know, you heard of Malcolm X. She said, yes. Well, he's in good hands. He, he, he'll he be well taken care of. He'll be protected. And she said, okay. And then that's when she backed off, uh, kind of let me live my own life then. Yeah, so that's how that happened. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And what was you were in um, Queens or you were in ba uh, Baltimore? Like, how, like what mosque were you a part of? I I came out of the mosque number seven, and 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 uh, at the time it was on Eastern Parkway, um, mosque number seven, and and uh, Minister Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him was my first minister, and may Allah be pleased with our brother, Captain Sterling Muhammad, yes, who sir, was yes, down sir. in Atlanta. And uh, he was my first captain. And uh, after that, and it was just, he, he was a he was top soldier. Um, and you know, Minister Abdullah can teach. And yes, sir. I, I'm, I'm still remembering one of the um, lectures he did called the Guerrilla, Guerrilla Warfare. As one mm. of the most powerful lectures, I've, I've still is 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 personal. If you are an FOI, you should know what that is. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. And I, I'm honored to know both of their family members, and was honored to be taught by Minister Abdullah. So may Allah be pleased with both of them. What what was he? Uh, what was uh, Brother Captain Sterling? What was he like? He was no nonsense. He was a no nonsense captain, but he was a practical man and he was fair. Mm. He was definitely a fair man. And uh, he 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 uh, he raised up men. He, you know, not he can go in anywhere and in any environment and move men. And that mm. was what kind of man he was. I, I mean, matter of fact, I think his his son, his son is in, in Washington, D.C. right now, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, one of his sons, and, uh, and I hadn't, I hadn't seen him in a while, but I think we had a meeting maybe a month ago or so. He he was over, and and I saw him. I hadn't seen him, but I, I hadn't seen him since he was young, really young. Mm -hmm. And then we spoke for a little while, uh, but yeah, it, that Captain Sterling was 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 one of those men you will never forget, and may Allah be pleased with him. And the men that he trained, uh, you know, my, uh, uh, GM, uh, Brother Captain William, you know, RoboCop. Yes, sir. Yes, <laughs> you know, sir. Yes, sir. He, yes, sir. he trained a lot of men, uh, Brother Xavier Muhammad. Uh, yes, sir. Our, 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 our assistant Supreme Captain um, in Chicago. He he trained a lot of, lot of men. Yes, sir. Beautiful, crazy to be told a lot of people and bear witness. Yes, Brother Daniel uh, E. Muhammad says the captain's captain, and he also bears witness to the lecture that you were referring to earlier. Well, Salam, Brother Daniel E. Thank you for showing love, and thank you for going out among the people yesterday. We saw all the pictures. Thank you for always being on the front line. I wanted to ask you, sir, the how did you meet? You, you got Brother Richard 3X. Now we know him as the great Professor Griff. How did you come to meet? Uh, Chuck D, Terminator X, and the rest of the great S1W. Well, we what we did was uh, when when I like two years after I accepted Islam, Allah blessed me to be in this group. Uh, 
in 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 the autobiography of James Bond, you, I kind of call it, I, it is a is one of the tracks in there called Richard Three X and how yes, I got became a, a part of a Public Enemy um, when when the group was being you know formulated. Griffith said, um, "Hey, you want to you want to be down?" He just said, hey, "You want to be down?" Like I, I, I'm not doing anything. Uh, sure. And then I don't think any of us knew what it was going to, what it was going to do. But that first year, you know, I didn't do, I didn't go anywhere. I didn't, I, I, I rarely even took pictures because I was still working. But mm -hmm. when we actually start really doing stuff, um, the group went out on the License to Ill tour. We, we run. Excuse me, we run around in a in a band, but I didn't go on that particular tour. June 1987, the Def Jam tour was my first tour. Uh, yes, sir. I rode down, I rode down from New York. Uh, all of us was on a on a on the bus together. LL, Houdini, Jalil, Ecstasy, Grandmaster D, um, uh. Eric being Rakim, and you know, Rakim at the time was like 17 years old. And we all mm -hmm. rode, LL had to be like 16 or 17 himself. Um, we all went down to Richmond, Virginia, and at the Richmond Coliseum that night, um the world was introduced to Public Enemy on tour. Uh at first it wasn't, you know, the show was it was I, right, but we was only doing eight minutes at the time. And that eight minutes, you know, Chuck was like he he wasn't he wasn't happy with the show at all. But then Dougie Fresh came in the in in the in the dressing room and he said, Man, you guys uh, you know, he critiqued the show and he kind of told us that, hey, you guys uh, you guys need to move, uh, Chuck Flavor, you y'all y'all need to, you know, go past each other. And hey, the, the S1Ws, y'all need to, y'all need to drill. Y'all need to do something. And then that's how we started drilling. And we was always drilling because back then the FOI class was Saturday mornings at 7 30 a.m. in the morning. And mm -hmm. um we drilled, shoot, we drilled it. Man, we drilled, seemed like we drilled every day. And yes, that's how that drilling. But sister, my sister, a long time sister, I mean, she's uh, Sister Sharima Muhammad, who lives in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, she used to choreograph our uh, our drills and stuff. And she would, you know, we would work together and do it because the sisters at that time had what what we call showtime drill. You know, today, you know, the drills is you know elaborate. You know, but back then the sisters had the showtime drill, and so mm -hmm. we started drilling and hey, it. it it was just so some different in hip hop that was never seen before. So when we started drilling in the show, that eight minutes became a fireball. That eight mm -hmm. minutes on stage, and then by the by the end of the year, going into 1988, the winter of '88, we started headlining our own shows, and then it just the shows was just like, oh my god, it just it was blowing people away and you know it was it it made it wasn't the best hip hop show but you was going to get your money's worth and you either you was going to stay on the stage with us or we was going to blow you off the stage but that's how that's how that's how that that came about yes sir yes sir excellent praise be to Allah. Okay, and people are showing you love all around the world, Brother James Bond. Thank you all for watching. Um, talk about the history. Brother Nelson Ramos, Asim uh beautiful and beloved Muslim family. Lekim Salam, Brother Nelson Ramos. Thank you, everyone who's watching and continues to show love to our brother. I wanted to ask you, all right, so of course, when I was younger in my house, growing up, both parents, was it was nothing being played but fight the power and all of it. You know, it was just a lot of public enemy being played. So how yeah, how yeah. that you know, when you're little, you don't know the impact. I didn't, I was so young, I didn't know the impact of public enemy until I became an adult. And when I was in high school, when I was in high school is when I really saw the, the impact because I was in a suburban high school and I saw all of these white children who were 
had this, the public enemy shirts on the emblems. And I was like, yo, I know them. They was like, you don't know public enemy. I was like, yo, I know who these people are. And they was like, ah. But I didn't know that it was a, I had to go do my research. And then I'm like, my mom was like, get a watch, do the right thing. You got to see this, you got to see that. And then, you know, this video, I'm like, oh, okay. So when I'm watching it, did you know that when you were doing Fight the Power, it would become such an iconic song, iconic video? Not, 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 at, not at all. Uh, I think uh, brother, brother minister, student minister, Akbar Muhammad, our international representative, uh, told us, he said, man, y'all music is hitting Africa like, like a bullet to the chest. Mm. And it was like, wow. We, we, the impact, I don't think any of us knew the impact until the second album, It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back. Um, we all had a meeting when we was like, yo, this ain't us no more. This is bigger than us. When that song came out from uh, It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back, when that album dropped, it just was pandemonium from that point on, uh, like straight from uh, Vibe Magazine. Uh, I mean, from all of the magazines, from right on to everything, it was just, um, it, it, I don't think any of us knew the impact of what it was going to be, but it was the first time uh, a political uh, hip-hop band would even uh, touch in, in the manner that we did. And we were all young, so, you know, a uh, little older than most of the guys who, who came out. Um, we were a little, we was in our 20s, like running them. They was teenagers. Doug Fresh was young. LL, all of those guys was young. So when we came out, we were a little older, a little bit more mature. We were men at that time. And, you know, being an FOI, you definitely going to be a man. You're going to be groomed and, as a man. But the impact. It was Brother Akbar who told us that your music is playing in Africa and the young people, the young soldiers in Africa was rocking your music over there and seeing you all with the camouflage and drilling and stuff. It just was, uh, it was a, a revolution. It was a movement. It wasn't just the song Fight the Power it was a movement worldwide. Uh, the, 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 our Arab brothers and sisters who were in military was rocking it. Even the brothers and sisters that was in the U.S. military was rock, rocking Fight the Power, and it was just an anthem. You know, I, it was Spike Lee asked Chuck to write the song, and it just was, it actually comes from the uh, the Isley brothers' Fight the Power, you know, and it just, Chuck just made it an anthem. Mm, mm. Excellent. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And people are bear witness all around the world. That's right. Uh, that's the truth. How an FOI should be. He witnessed the impact of the influence of the music of Public Enemy in his sophomore year in 1988 and 1989. Well, one of the questions that I'm going to ask you later when we get to your album is I always ask each guest, what is your favorite album of all time? And the most, out of all of the interviews that I've done, the most stated album from the mo from the group, from out of anybody I've ever interviewed, the majority of them say Public Enemy. It's, it takes a nation a million for every black planet. It's, it's, it's going to be some form of public enemy. And, and people heard the teachings from public enemy and, and actually brought them and transformed their life. Do you feel that? Do you, people, do you know that something that you all started and bands and traveling and well, young men would impact people like that? Yeah, yesterday I was talking to some uh, believers. We, you know, we we was, uh, and, and, and yes, an FOI does do his duty. I was uh, at, at, you know, helping out with the sisters class, securing the sisters class yesterday. So um, I'm still on the post. <laughs> but the impact of a takes a nation, like I said, we we had the meeting. We didn't know the the ramification of the album and what it did and where it hit. It was just, it was huge. And when we when we at the meeting. The meeting lasts all the way till the next day, early morning. Yo, this is not us anymore. This is bigger than us. And then not until our our leader and brother, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, told us, said, didn't you know you was in the book? Um, and 
Brother Miles Muhammad in San Francisco, I've known him since he was 16 years old, uh, said, man, it wasn't no FOI on the corner with a paper that brought me into the nation of Islam. It was you guys. It was you, public enemy. And not until that time that I knew the impact that we had. And then the minister said, you guys are affecting young people everywhere. And we was, I think we were either in Los Angeles, and, and, and I'm just paraphrasing, this is uh, the minister. You don't want to ever use the man of God's words and not have them correct. But he said to us, he said, you all are like Muhammad Ali was to the messenger, public enemy is to me. And that from that time on, we was pushing the envelope and, you know, it was it 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 was it was rough. It was tough for us because when we were saying, you know, Minister Farrakhan, he's a man you ought to listen to. And it just it, it it was tough for us, but we kept moving forward with it and we never gave up. And we kept moving forward because he not only was he a a a, a father to us, but he he guided us. He his, his hand was on us, so therefore God's hand was on us as well. So nobody got hurt, nobody got killed, bomb threats, all kinds of things was going on. So, But it was Allah who had his hand on us and nobody could touch us. When Allah is for you, nobody can be against you. Oh, yes, sir. Jesus. Yes, sir. And on behalf of myself, my family, and the viewing audience of the People's Podcast, we want to thank you. Brother James Bond, for your many sacrifices and the many sacrifices of your family to help establish Islam here in North America and all over the world. Thank you very much. Um, sure, Adi, thank you. Adi on the sword thank said, you for a lot. Because your, your brother at that time didn't, I, I, look, I didn't know the impact. So I it till this day, and I, I'll be 62 years old and to understand the ramification of what that that thing the, the group did. Uh they had uh this was I want to say 2014 or 2013 or somewhere around there. They did a uh at uh New York University, a public enemy uh a whole week of takes a nation of millions and what that album the impact of that album and um, who would affect some of the people, some of the noted people who uh, Brad Radner uh, did an intern and he was one of the video um, directors for Public Enemy Videos. And he he he's, he, he's a big um, director in Hollywood now, the Superman, Batman, all of those movies he directed. Um, I think his name is Lionel. Uh, he directed and he, he he went on to do some. Eric Mesa um, mm -hmm. directed Public Enemy uh, by the time I get to Arizona, which was a very impactful video that that gained uh, um, Dr. Martin Luther King holiday in Arizona was the only state holding out. And it, that holiday came about from that video and mm -hmm. Eric Mosa went on to direct uh, House uh, the House Party movies. Um, okay, okay. So, so it was amazing. Things came up out of the impact of it takes a nation of millions, and some of the artists that went with Public Enemy every tour we went on, like Queen Latifah, Naughty by Nature, um, like Eric. Um, all of us, we, we we pretty much toured together, but when Public Enemy start headlining this own tour, we always took Queen Latifah, MC Light around with us. Mm. And it the impact, the way we were doing, and we didn't really think anything of it. It was just how we do things in the minds. You know, the organization of a military is moved by the men and it's organized. It's We ran the tour or the the movement and we we ran it like we would do the mosque, how we do in the mosque. So that was the thing that a lot of the groups learned from us because that's what we did. We did it from how the mosque is operated. And mm. we we put uh, 
things in place where all of us was under the law. Nobody was above or under the law. So everybody um, got fairly, it was fairly dealt. If somebody fell victim to the law, we just held COVID. <laughs> you know, we, we hold court. So that's how public enemy was ran. Ran like the mobs. Praise be so alive. Beautiful. Yes, sir. And thank you very much. And thank you, everyone, who is uh, showing love all around the world. Thank you very much, Brother Adi on the sword. Thank you for everyone who continues to show love. We have a quick 60-second commercial break for all of the sponsors of the People's Podcast. We are grateful for every like, share, and subscription for every anonymous cash app. Thank you all very much. If you like and enjoy what you all are watching, please continue to show love and support. Hey, so every Sunday you do this, right? We are live with the People's Podcast. Street Premier Media Production. He has a 4K camera and a drone. He does television and film editing. Please reach out if you need any of that. Sister Naima, Stay On Point Dance Academy. She teaches ballet virtually to young girls all across the country. Sister Miriam, ABC I Love Me Children's Book and Coloring Book. My Father's Book, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ. My two books, Cleopatra, which is a children's book, and No Father, No Excuse, both of which are available on Amazon. Perfect. Thank you all for everyone who continues to show love to the People's Podcast. We're right back to our brother, Brother James. And, if, and everyone who's watching, please let us know what city you're watching. And if you have any guest suggestions, uh, by all means, put them in the comments and we'll get to the we'll get to our guest suggestions as well. I wanted to ask you, Brother James, we spoke of everyone, but we didn't speak of uh, someone who took helped take the brand of Public Enemy all around the globe as well. None other than Flavor Flav. How, how, how did how did that come about? And how if you all are very serious and disciplined and he's very fun and outgoing, how did that combination fuse? Well, the combination of flavor, Chuck. So you you got Chuck and everybody else serious, and then you got Flavor Flav, whose personality is, a, is uh, addictive and, and infectious. So everybody loved him. So I think when you see a public enemy show, the energy that it, it it brings and just just to have flavor doing his antics and and stuff it, it was just amazing i don't think we we would actually know maybe chuck and hank shockley uh knew what the impact would probably be with having flavor because he had a radio show on bau that was you know everybody tuning in on flavor flav and chuck you know public enemy uh his show was called public enemy number 1 and them two together, the energy was just off the off the chain, and and Flavor's mm -hmm. personality and character is just you you're gonna love this dude. You're just gonna love him, and that's I, I think that that formula with Flavor doing what he did, Chuck doing us, and then when you actually saw the show, the movement, your mind was just going several different ways, and then you had this big X on the stage and. Well, for the people who don't know, X represents the unknown in the mathematical language. So if your name is Allen or your name is Washington or Norman or whatnot, that that's not your name. That was the plantation that owned your family. So uh, come on over to the Nation of Islam and get a holy name. <laughs> yes, sir. But that's Flavor Flav. That's his character. Now, Flavor, a uh, very talented uh individual plays 15 different instruments very well and flavor yeah. used to go out to the mosque in corona queens um i forget the actual number of that was it uh uh seven uh, c i'm not sure seven b i'm not sure which one it was but he used to go out there with brother minister akbar who was minister larry at the time who hmm. were teaching, I think, in in, in Queens. Uh, he would go to the mosque there himself. And then there was a mosque in 70, I think 72 or 73 in Hempstead, New York, uh, where we was out in Long Island. So Hempstead is like one of the major hubs of Long Island in, in our area. So that was a mosque there. And our brother, Brother James, who lives in, James Muhammad, who lives in 
Tampa, Florida now, who was who was the, I think he was the student minister or assistant minister in Hempstead, New York. Mm -hmm. But that was the brother who used to uh, bring me out to the mosque as well, Brother James Muhammad down in um down down in Tampa, Florida, who's who's there. He teaches well there as well. Praise be to Allah. Beautiful. Yes, sir. I wanted to ask you about fear. Now you all are repping the nation of Islam. It's intense, repping the star and crescent, public, I mean the global, all around the world. Were you ever faced with fear? And if so, how did you overcome that fear? Well, the honorable, the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan always say you have to challenge, challenge your fear. I don't know whether you ever got a chance to. Well, you probably did. You were born and raised in this. So um, fear, fear, faith, and truth. Absolutely. Talked about fear, facing fear. But when you face it, you don't back away from it. You, you, because fear is a natural thing. You, you face it, and when you face it, you overcome. So if we believe in Allah, and we do. Once you once you give the cry, you ain't got fear no more. They got fear. And and you know, the clan, we had a thing, we was torn, uh, we would hang the clansmen. And most of the crew on on the public enemy tour, you know, they was a part, they they might have been a part of the clan, but they were scared to hang the clan on. We would hang the clan in the middle of our show, uh, the clansmen. Mm -hmm. And then I think. We was in North Carolina doing the show, and the clans was gonna mark on. But anytime you see a FOI, you see the FOI, ain't nobody bothering public enemy, because we we had fifty to a hundred black men with bow, suit and bow tie. So messing with us, you was messing with the nation of Islam. So I, I we didn't fear anything. We didn't we didn't fear anything. Praise I can Lord. honestly say that. We was not fearful of anything. Mm -hmm. We just challenged it. We, you know, and what we did, what we couldn't handle, the minister handled. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, sir. And speaking of the minister handling things, what what is some of the uh, advice and counsel that he's given to you all that has helped you um, sustain your faith all these years? Well. As you know, Public Enemy went through a, a period where, with the Jewish community, um, at that time, he brought the hand, the guidance uh, came through him to to do what what we did, and we came out of that, you know, um, well because of his guidance, and we didn't do anything on our own when it came to that kind of stuff. You know, he he. He helped guide us through that with the help of Allah. The man of God gave us the wisdom and, and the, the know how to get through those difficult times. So we was able to get through times um, that were very difficult at that time. So yeah, his 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 guidance was very instrumental and in the group still staying together and we we kept a tight wall. So so to speak, we circled the wagons around that time and just, you know, we kept moving. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Beautiful. And I wanted to ask you, most most artists, but now it's more obvious, certain groups, you say anything about you cancel, take your money, they shut you down. And then yet I see a couple of years ago, you all are at the Rock and getting inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and still think the most honorable minister Louis Farrakhan there and is still successful. How did you all make it through all that, not get canceled and not bow? Like how, like how well, did that happen? Well, one of the things I think, once you make a stand, see, the Quran says that when you, when you resist the devil, he'll flee from you. So when we was doing, most of the people we, we did business with were, you know, they, they were Jewish people. Uh, you know, Leo Cohen, um, Rick Rubin, and, and 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 some of those, you know, those people are very well known. But we was principled. We we took our stance and we we stood even when the wind was blowing on us. We we kept our stance. But anytime you take a stance and what's right, 
if anybody is against you and God is for you, you will get through it. I think what happens today is people are afraid to stand up as a man or a woman and say what it is that they believe in and live it. Don't don't deny it. Oh yeah, I, we follow Minister, we follow the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. We we had no problems with that. We we and and we never denied that. So when somebody um, deny, you know, the minister, but they meet in private with him, but they don't, you know, out outwardly say anything. How can you get a blessing from denying the man of God? You 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 can't do it. And I think that's that's one of the biggest things because most of these artists come to the minister and they say, I mean, because the minister doing the hip hop thing, he he, the Nation of Islam has been a heavily influenced uh, on hip hop from since the, the the days of the messenger because you had some of the groups like you know Cool in the Gang, uh, 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 some of those groups and members were a part of the Joe Tex, uh, not Joe Tex, what's his name, Joe. Was yeah, it Joe Tex. Yeah, Joe Tex. Yeah, Joe Tex. It was Joe Tex. He was a member of the Nation of Islam. You had some members of uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. And you had some, I mean, you just said, especially cool in the game. You had people in, but they denied. See, we never denied. We never denied that we were followers of Firecon. We never denied that. And th it cleared the way. Nobody bothered us. You know, nobody, mm -hmm. We. I think we did the, Either was the American Music Awards or the Grammys. We all wore our ceremonial uniform, the white that you mm -hmm. see on the Fear of a Black Planet. And you should have seen the people moving out of our way and stepping to a side and let us go through. And, and mm -hmm. it was just like the minister was there with us and we moving through a crowd. And you know how we move through the crowd. We And everybody just move out our way. And that's just what happened. Everybody just cleared the way for us to come in. But anytime you stand up for what's right, you're going to always have an element to come against you. And that's just what it is. Until you show that element that you won't back down and you're not afraid of them, uh, you can keep moving. And God will clear that way for you because when God is for you, nobody can be against you. They can cancel whatever they want, but the people will still get to you. They'll still buy your, when, with Public Enemy, when they was taking records off the shelf, people was going out buying more. So it was like a double-edged sword. And from that time, and even now, with the minister being able, we've been independent of, of any media outlet or any of that. We've been always to, been able to uh, film our own stuff, do our own things, and still get it to the people. So it, it, the people don't miss anything. So just stand up. If you stand up and resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Beautiful. Praise be to Allah. I wanted to ask you about the upcoming documentary that you all are working on. Is it finished? When can we see it? Because the people it's want to know. Editing. It's in the editing stage right now. Uh, it's going to be some interesting things. Uh, and people are gonna laugh. They they're gonna laugh. They're gonna some some may cry. Some, you know, but it's gonna be one of those things that uh, everybody's gonna have to tune in on. But it's gonna be excellent. It's in the editing stage right now. Hmm. Praise be to Allah. Wonderful. And speaking of projects, I want to make sure that everyone goes out and get the this projects. The two projects, my brother, brother James, mom. Phenomenal. How can they get your album, sir? How can we make sure that we show love and support to you? Uh, you can go to Bandcamp. Uh, you can check in there. Actually, you can listen to the whole uh, album on Bandcamp and decide whether you want to buy it. You can mm -hmm. go to mm -hmm. Apple Music. You can go to Spotify. All of the platforms you can go and get the, the latest album came out February 2nd, um, two, 2024, not too long ago. Um, uh, and the uh, from the mind of James Bond came out May 3rd, 2019. Uh, so that was my first album, first time. So you know, go out and get it. Um, uh, especially the autobiography of James Bond, that album gives you a, a look into you know my journey, and that journey 
even with yourself, there's a song on there called Me, and where it talks about you, you, you know, um, and we always hear the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan talks about, you know, when you were born, you already won. You already won the race. All you got to do is keep moving, keep moving forward and connect into the God who created you. And once you yes, do sir. that, you write in the book of Joshua, you write in the book of James, you write in the book of whoever you are, you write in that book, you write in yourself. So uh, me is, is really when your father um, impregnated your mother, there was a, 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 a billion sperm cells and you out of a billion came out, you. So God deposited it in each and every one of us a gift. All you got to do is connect to that gift and, and, and there's your commerce. There's your whatever you need comes out of that gift. Just connecting to the true and living God. That's all we got to do. And that was one of the inspirations of, of that song. Uh, my, myself, uh, brother Eric Muhammad, who's he he's from Baltimore, Maryland, but he's in Philadelphia now. He's in the mosque down there. Uh, me and him always, sometime I, I'll ask him, I'll give him a title and sometime he'll, he'll, he'll come up with something for me. And, and, and this time I didn't get a chance to put him on this album. Because of course I had caught COVID at the time when I when I I was very sick, so I didn't get a chance to put him on the album. But he's always going to get credit uh, where when it when it comes to me, brother Eric. The, the Eric is the poet MC, another hip hop uh, brother in the nation of Islam. Very very talented brother. Uh, he's doing his thing in Philly right now. He he the poet MC Muhammad. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shout out to Brother Eric. I wanted to ask you, a lot of the current hip-hop right now is buzzing, dealing with rap battling, right? And, and you know, you got it's, it's Drake, it's Kendrick, it's this, these are the top people going at it. With with you being from the origin of it in the 80s, what was it like uh, with the rap battling back then? Well, it, it was competition, but during that time, nobody got hurt or, uh, you know, it wasn't no war like it is now where it could really turn into something where somebody get hurt. You had uh, LL and uh, Kumo D battling, but it was all in fun, you know, going back and forth. Uh, you would have um, uh, Grandma, uh, not uh, Melly Mel. Melly Mel was a battle rapper and LL. LL arguably is one of the, the one of the greatest at battling. That's uh, right. That's right. You know, uh, same thing with Buster Rhyme, my little brother Buster. I've known yes, him sir. since he was about 14, 15 years old. Um, same thing with him, battle. But it was never a time where when they were battling, it turned into where somebody was gonna get hurt. Uh, today they just got and, and see the thing about hip hop today, do any of them. And some of them do. I, I I must attest to that. Buster knows from the top because Buster comes out of our camp. Um, mm. how, how how things uh, work. We give honor to those who went before us, um, and and we keep the tradition of it going because you know the main thing about hip hop is is you being able to uh, project uh, uh, as we call it call and respond, and and when you battle. That's what you're doing. You you are showing these things. You are doing an ancient thing, and we talked about it earlier. Was griots the griots in Africa told our our history in a rhythmic way. So it's the same day when the drums are beaten. We can hear the drums over in California, like Chuck D used to say. Rap is the CNN of the uh, uh, of, of of the black community, and rap was so we was knowing what they was doing in California because of what Ice Cube and NWA them was saying. We we knew it because Ice T was saying it. Then we heard our brothers down in Miami when Miami bass music started traveling the country, and then it just started going everywhere. And you know that's what you know rap was at that time. But today. You got a lot of, you got superstars. You got a lot of superstars today, but I wish they would say more in their music 
to influence, to 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 move our people because you know that's that's what mu music is a universal language that that connects us to the world. And if if a brother like Little Wayne, who's you know a powerful brother in hip hop, but if he said something that was very positive, it changed the the thinking. Of to oppose of what they're saying in the music right now. I love the the the, the hip hop artists and they just showing themselves to be a little different today. The music is hot, but if they said something uh, positive, what would the world be like right now? See, mm. the devil is ruling it right now. The devil. See, these airways are sacred, and the devil is ruling the airways now. When we came along, you had a balance in hip hop where. You know, you will hear Public Enemy, but we didn't get radio play until Chuck started saying, you know, radio don't play me at night. And he was whooping them. And when he mm. was whooping them, they started playing us. And um, we had an argument with uh, MTV2, I think. They wouldn't play, get the people what they want. And we have, uh, Chuck was talking about Amir uh, J Jamal and uh, mm. uh, H. Rap Brown. And he, they, they wouldn't play it, saying, you know, it, it, it wasn't so. But Chuck's argument was, oh, you will play gin and juice, but you can't play, uh, get the people what they want. Uh, gin and juice was, it was going, and there's no disrespect to any of the artists. Uh, uh, Pastor Cavassier, which is the song that Buster uh, wrote. No disrespect to my little brother, but you gonna give us a hard time about who. Uh, Abu Jamil, uh, Jamal, or H. Rap Brown, who, 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 what? And so they lost the argument. They started playing our records, and and um, that's how it is. Right now, you can hear the most foulest thing on the radio right now, and they playing it, and it doesn't matter. Half-naked girls, it doesn't matter. And that's where hip-hop from that time to now has evolved and maybe if we could get ourselves more out there I'm talking about I'm talking about where we could talk to our brothers and sisters hey look here man y'all gotta y'all you gotta do better it was about the performance it was about the class and you know you don't have to show your you don't have to show your your body parts to entertain our people we we already got the formula you don't have to do that today and, and and it's just getting wilder and wilder. But it's not us. It's the the, the 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 entertainment apparatus that's pushing it. The more filthy it is, the better it is. <laughs> mm, mm. Yes, sir. I wanted to ask you, will Public Enemy, do you think that you all will ever work on a biopic? Yeah. Uh, at, at some point, something is going to be coming out. Um, we had talked about it. All of us had talked about it biopic at some point it will be uh it'll be coming out you just that, gotta wait and see <laughs> yes sir i think that would be important to help sharing your story and helping us understand uh you know through art what what you are the impact that you all have done and how it all came about so speaking of the impact what is we we know that you all are the number one uh voted on album when I say what's your favorite album of all time to our guest the majority of people say public enemy what is your favorite album of all time sir uh I like um that last album that Buster Rhymes made I, I love that album okay um that to me that's one of the top my top and uh you know uh runs them uh album they put out and, and Grandmaster Flash. I, I just got a few, but that particular album by Buster, I love that album. You can't go wrong with Buster Rhymes. You can't go wrong with Run DMC. And, sh and shout out to Grandmaster Flash as well. What would you like your legacy to be, sir? Well, that I was a good brother. Um, and we shared our art, our mind with our family and that you know, it's, it's something my daughters or any of my children were ever in trouble. The people just based on my name, uh, the people will make sure my children was good and my grandchildren. So, 
yeah, that, that'll be it for me in terms of what I would want my legacy to be that I, I soldiered in the army of God and I stayed in it from the time I was 21 years old to now. Praise be to Allah. What an honor, sir. What a legacy. And on behalf of myself and drill drillers everywhere, especially those who are in the, the, the class that I cut from who do this in, in award shows, who drill to honor you all. Yes, in award yes, shows. Sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, we owe you all so much. Shout out to the S1W. We salute the S1W for opening so many doors for us with celebrities. Just with people, when they when we drill the music, that comes from the S1W. And um, man, Which we comes from the FOI. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. So yes, sir. Both sir. of them are the same thing. When we say security of the first world, well, the security of the first world is the FOI of this new world that's coming in. <laughs> that's definitely who that is. Crazy. Yes, sir. And, make, and please make everyone go back to, and look at the interview that we did with Chuck D, Professor Griff, Sister Sharima, all of the the, uh, the members of Public Enemy. Thank you all very much for always being kind and showing love to uh, myself and the People's Podcast, my family as well. Brother Nelson Ramos says an absolute great interview. Thank you both. Thank you, sir. Can't wait to upload this to YouTube. This is Joshua yes, Leonard Muhammad signing off for the People's Podcast. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Yes, sir. Well, Lake Peace. Yes, sir. Thank you all for watching.